Hello and welcome to this segment of Suzuki's Mechanic to Mechanic video training program. During this presentation, we're going to be reviewing Suzuki's SS2 electro tester and the pocket tester. But before we begin, you may want to have both testers available, along with the service manual and the ready reference manual. Both the SS2 electro tester and the pocket tester have many applications and can be used on other products as well. Before we can do that, we must have a basic common knowledge of some electrical terms. The common terms are voltage, amperage, and resistance. Voltage can be defined as the pushing force of electrical current. Amperage is the flow of electrical current. And resistance is the resistance to the flow of electrical current. Let's take these terms and apply them to our water analogy chart. Water in our holding tank represents voltage or pressure. Water flowing through the pipe represents current or amperage. And the faucet represents resistance, which is measured in ohms. The two types of circuits that you will commonly be dealing with is a series and parallel circuit. When we think of a circuit, we are saying that electrical current must have a complete path to flow through from its starting point through the loads and back to the starting point. Let's apply this to our simple series circuit. The battery represents voltage. Amperage or current flow would start at the positive terminal, flow through the circuit through our first light bulb, which represents resistance, through our second light bulb, and on through the circuit to the battery negative terminal. If either bulb would fail, the remaining bulb would be unable to light because we no longer have a complete circuit. This is an important fact to remember about a series circuit. Let's take a look at a parallel circuit. As you can see, the current has two separate paths to flow through. Starting in our battery's positive terminal, the current would flow through the circuit to this point where it splits and has two separate branches to flow through, illuminating both light bulbs and returning to the negative terminal of the battery. If either bulb would fail, the remaining bulb would stay lit because we still have a complete path to ground. This is the major difference between a parallel circuit and a series circuit. Now that we have reviewed the basic electrical terms and circuit layout, let's look at the pocket tester. The pocket tester is a most useful troubleshooting tool in your service department because of the many functions it's capable of performing. You can check AC voltage, DC voltage, amperage, and resistance. Now let's move to our chart of the pocket tester. I've taken and color-coded the scales at the top and the ranges at the bottom to help clarify their relationship to each other. Starting at the bottom, our selector knob is used for determining the desired range to test on. We have a positive plug-in jack, a negative plug-in jack, and a separate jack we use when checking DC amperage. The scale at the top, shown in orange, is used for measuring resistance. The scale shown in pink will be used for measuring DC and AC voltage. As you can see, there are three separate scales, 0 to 10, 0 to 25, and 0 to 250. The scale shown in green will be used for increased accuracy when measuring AC 10 volts. The scale shown in blue will be used for measuring DC amperage and has a range of 0 to 20. The mirror in the center of your meter allows us to see needle reflection. If needle reflection is present in the mirror, you're holding the meter incorrectly and your readings will be wrong. To calibrate the meter, we have a calibration screw in the center. This allows us to align the needle with a zero on the left side of the scale. You may want to check your meter and make sure that it's calibrated correctly. Now let's take some resistance measurements. Let's check the resistance on the primary side of this ignition coil. We must first re refer to the service manual and the ready reference manual for the correct specification and our meter setting. To set the meter up, we must install the red test lead into the positive jack and the black test lead into the negative jack. According to our specification, we need to rotate the selector knob to the times one scale. We're now ready to calibrate the meter. Attach the test leads 
and observe the needle. It should align with a zero on the right side of the scale. If it doesn't, rotate the adjuster knob to bring it into proper alignment. If you're still unable to get proper alignment, more than likely, you need to replace the battery and the inside of the meter. Now let's test an ignition coil. Remember, when checking resistance, there must be no voltage present in the system. As a precaution, remove the negative battery terminal or remove the component from the vehicle that you're testing. Hook up your test leads to the primary wires of the ignition coil and take the reading on the top scale. As you can see, it indicates about 5 ohms. This is well within the specification for this coil. Now let's check the resistance on the secondary side. We must first refer to the service manual for the correct specification and the meter setting. For doing this test, we must rotate the selector knob to the times 1K scale, K representing 1,000. We then need to recalibrate the meter, making sure that the needle aligns with a zero. Attach the test leads to our ignition coil high tension wires and take the reading on the top scale. As you can see, it indicates 14. Remember, we must multiply this times 1,000, giving us a reading of 14,000 ohms. Let's do another resistance check, this time on a spark plug cap. We can leave our selector knob in the same position and simply attach the test probes to each end of the contacts inside the cap. As you can see, we have a reading of 11,000 ohms. This is correct for a spark plug cap. The pocket tester allows you to check resistance on four different scales, times 1, times 10, times 100, and times 1K, K representing 1,000. Anytime you change positions, you must recalibrate the meter. Another feature of the pocket tester is its ability to measure DC voltage. When the voltage you're testing is unknown, always rotate the selector knob to the highest position. In this case, we're going to check the voltage on this 12-volt battery. So we've got our selector knob set on the 25-volt scale. We've left the test leads in the same position. When attaching your test leads, Make sure that you have the correct polarity. The black test lead to the negative and the red test lead to the power or positive. And take the reading off the center voltage scale. As you can see, it indicates about 12 volts. This is about normal for a fully charged battery. Let's move to the wall chart and I'll demonstrate how to attach a voltmeter into an operational circuit. We must remember that when attaching a voltmeter, we must always keep it, hook it in parallel to the circuit that we're testing. Attaching the positive lead to the power and the negative lead to an appropriate ground. Now let's move to the motorcycle and do an actual DC test. When performing a DC voltage check at the headlight on the motorcycle, we can leave the selector knob in the same position because we know this motorcycle has a 12 volt battery in it. We've attached the negative lead to an appropriate ground. And we'll touch our red lead to the yellow wire of the headlight, having the dimmer switch in the high beam position. Turn on the ignition switch and take the reading on the 25 volt scale. As you can see, our meter indicates 10, 10 volts. That's telling us our battery is in need of a charge. If you wish to do an AC voltage test, connect the leads in a similar manner. Rotate the selector knob to the appropriate range. Keep in mind that when checking voltage, you must attach the meter in parallel to the circuit that you're checking. The service manual is your best source of information for doing various checks on electrical components and circuits. The last test we can perform with a pocket tester is measuring DC amperage. From earlier discussions, we said that amperage was the flow of electrical current in a circuit. To install an amp meter, we must disconnect that circuit to allow the current to flow through the meter and on into the circuit. Let's take this information and check the charging system of the motorcycle. If you wish to check the DC amperage on a charging circuit, you must first have the selector knob rotated to the DC 20 amp scale. Move the red lead to the DC 20 amp jack. 
locate the main fuse holder and remove the main fuse. Attach your test probes in series with a circuit. Turn on the ignition switch, start the motorcycle, and observe your reading on the bottom scale. Now that you've learned how to use the pocket tester, let's move on to the SS2 electro tester. The SS2 electro tester has many useful features and functions combined into one useful package. You can check AC voltage, DC voltage, DC amperage, resistance. You can test condensers, PEI units, check ignition coils, and it has a convenient timing light function. Starting in the lower left corner, we have the main power supply cord, the on-off switch, the main fuse, the pilot light that is illuminated whenever the tester is turned on, the multimeter, our range selector knob, the calibration screws, our condenser test switch, the PEI indicator light, and our PEI ignition coil and timing light selector knob. We have our spark coil window, high tension test leads, the multi-pin connector used for checking PEI units and ignition coils, test leads for measuring voltage, resistance, and doing condenser tests, and our last set of leads will be used for measuring DC amperage. The multimeter is made up of several different scales. Starting on the top scale, lettered A, will be used for measuring DC amperage and DC voltage. The next scale, lettered B, will be used for measuring AC voltage. The red scale, lettered C, will be used for measuring resistance. And the last scale, lettered D, will be used when testing condensers. Our range selector knob is set in the off position. Moving clockwise, we have two ranges that we can check resistance in. Times 10 and a times 1K. Those readings will be taken on the red letter C scale. Moving on around, we have a range listed as MF for measuring microfarads when testing condensers. That scale we will refer to as letter D, the bottom one. We also have a DC 300 milliamp scale that we seldom use. On the bottom of our range selector, we have a DC 30 amp range, and those readings will be taken on the top scale, which we have a, which we have a range of minus 5 amps to a positive 30 amps. Our next scale measures DC voltage in two different ranges, 30 volts and 60 volts. Those readings will also be taken on the top scale. And our last range allows us to measure AC voltage on two separate ranges, and that reading will be taken on the second scale, letter B. Most functions of the SS2 and the pocket tester are similar with the exception of the calibration of the ohm meter. To calibrate the SS2, we must first check to make sure that the needle aligns with a zero on the left side of the scale. If it doesn't, rotate the adjuster screw. Once we've determined what range that we'll be testing in, and we've selected that position with our selector knob, we must make sure that the needle now aligns with the infinity mark on the right end of the scale. If it doesn't, rotate the adjuster screw to bring it into proper alignment. The SS2 also allows us to test condensers from point type ignition systems. To do this, we must first calibrate the meter. We need to rotate the selector knob to the MF position. Turn the power on and make sure that the test leads are not touching each other. On the bottom scale, we have a calibration mark. 
If the needle does not properly align, rotate the adjuster screw to bring it into proper alignment. We're now ready to test our condenser. Attach the negative lead of our tester to the mounting tab and the positive test lead to the condenser wire. Depress the test switch and observe the reading on the lower scale. As you can see, it indicates 0.25, which is the correct capacity of this condenser. If, while holding the test switch down, the needle would move off the scale, quickly release it, or damage will result to the meter. Another useful function that the SS2 tester can perform is a dynamic arc test. The SS2 can test virtually any type of ignition coil. Basically, an ignition coil is made up of one or two primary leads and one or two secondary leads. In a situation where you have only one primary lead, the iron core serves as the ground. Now I'd like to show you a spark test. We have our high tension leads attached to the high tension wires of the ignition coil. We've attached the primary test leads to the primary wires of the ignition coil. We rotate the selector knob to the ignition coil test, turn the tester on, and observe the spark in the window. This test should be allowed to run for a minimum of five minutes. And I would suggest that you do this test on an insulated surface. The connections are the same for testing a single lead coil, except for the negative test leads. We have to attach the negative test leads to the iron core of the coil. We have our selector knob in the ignition coil position and turn the tester on. This test should be allowed to run for a minimum of five minutes. The last test our SS2 can perform is to check PEI units. We can check both Nippon Denso and Kokosan, and they can be identified by the manufacturer's name on the outside. We will use three separate test leads when checking our PEI units, and they also are identified. Kokosan, Nippon Denso, and our last set is used for attaching the ignition coil lead. I've installed the PEI unit making sure that the wires are hooked up properly and the color codes match. We've rotated the selector knob to the PEI position and turn on the power. Observe the indicator lamp. It should come on bright and green. This test should be allowed to run for five minutes. Because of the complexity of the PEI unit, we have an optional test which allows you to check both the ignition coil and the PEI unit under actual operating conditions. We've left the PEI test leads attached to the PEI unit. We've installed an ignition coil to the PEI unit and installed a small clip into the ground wire. We've next installed our high tension test lead to the clip and the high tension test lead to the high tension wire of our ignition coil. Rotate the selector knob to the PEI position Turn on the tester and observe the spark in the window. This test should be allowed to run for a minimum of five minutes. This concludes our presentation of the SS2 electro tester and the pocket tester. As you know, today's high-tech motorcycles and ATVs demand precise servicing and repairs. We hope that today's presentation will assist you in offering quality repairs to your service customers. If you would like additional information, or if you're interested in attending any one of Suzuki's permanent training centers, please contact your district technical service manager. Bye for now.